Welcome to this video. As you can see today we're in my kitchen and no I'm not about to make the world's weirdest fruit salad. Instead we're gonna take some awesome macro shots and I got a bunch of ingredients or a bunch of interesting subjects prepared already. I'll be shooting on my Canon T7i and I've got a 50mm Helios lens on reverse with a close-up attachment and for the really tight shots to get really close I'll be using an Albinar 28mm lens. We'll be using the Yongnuo YN563 speedlight off camera and with a light modifier to take out the harshness. And that's about it with the gear. Let's dive right into it. So for the onion, I was thinking we can use a nice backlight to illuminate it from in behind and it's fairly um, translucent. So I think that's gonna look really cool. We'll take the speed light off camera and get the onion to stand up right and then we'll see what we can get. Very neat, very cool gradients. Let's lose the close up adapter and see what it looks like with a little less magnification. Wow, the light is so gorgeous coming through the onion. I really love these photos. Let's see if we can make the same concept work on the tomato. Very cool, but of course backlight isn't the only way to do it. So let's put the tomato flat on the counter and take the light source from a different angle. And I think this way we'll get some interesting reflections and as you see the slide modifier has a bit of a pattern to it. So this is going to make for interesting textures in the highlights, at least that's what I'm hoping. Let's see if I'm right. Wow, I'm loving this so much. Actually, I'm gonna do the same thing again. Take this bad boy off and see what we can find with a little bit less magnification. And there we go. Let's move on to the next item on our list. Next, we photograph this orange. But instead of using a backlight again, instead we'll zoom in on the white foamy stuff in the middle and we'll find some symmetry. And I think this is going to make for a really interesting composition. Very interesting. All right, that's it for the orange. Let's move on. Let's stick with the vegetables and go with the pepper next and this is really quite a photogenic fruit so before I want to cut it open I'm actually going to take a couple close-up shots just as is because I think the yellow and the green look really nice. I'm going to introduce some more or less dramatic side lighting and that looks good. Um, as you see we've got the stem right against the yellow it's going to make some nice color contrast. We've got the aperture down to f. 11 and this is going to make sure that our background is black and I think before I actually photograph it I'm going to spray some water on it just to get some more interesting detail on it and let's see what we can get nice let's cut this bad boy open and see what we find inside and this is already quite a cool view so for this shot I think I'm gonna put the flash on camera just to make sure that we get the light from right above where we want it and I don't have to handhold it. Because I'll be handholding the camera, maybe the pepper, so I only have so many hands. And this is really such a neat shot, very interesting, and I don't think I myself would guess that this is inside a pepper. Now this is cool, this is the view that I was hoping for. Let's get into it, but again I'm gonna take the speed light off the camera just to make sure that we get proper lighting and no too harsh shadows from above. So we're going to put it back onto remote trigger and 130 seconds should be alright. Wow, who would have known? I think we're done with the pepper. 
Next we photograph some pepper kernels on this wooden chopboard and I think the natural textures and the warm colors are really gonna work well together. To introduce some directional and interesting lighting I'll take the speed light off the camera and instead put it off to the right hand side so you can see what I'm doing. I'm using the close up element again to really get in there and not have too much negative space around my subject. Awesome, that is exactly what I was going for. We nailed focus and the colors and textures really go nicely together. Now, let's stick with the spices and photograph salt next. For the next shot we'll be photographing some Himalayan salt grains and I already got a bunch out here and I went for the bigger ones and I kind of put them in a line so it's easier for me to focus on them. And in order to just keep the shot clean and not get the grains lost in the textures of this uh, cutting board, I decided to use a different backdrop and I went for a piece of glass with a black fabric underneath because this is just going to make a perfect reflection. The glass reflects nicely and black fabric absorbs all the stray light that I don't want to mess with my reflection. So let's get started. Um, actually I'll be using the 28 millimeter lens on reverse instead of the 50 millimeter because it just brings me in way closer. The wider a lens the closer it gets you when you reverse it. And there we go. Awesome. Let's move on to the next item on our photo list. Talking about crystals, let's photograph some brown sugar next. And these are really some interesting subjects, but because we won't be able to align them as perfectly as the salt grains, we're going to increase the aperture just a little bit to f11. We'll keep the flash on camera and then get in there and find some interesting stuff. Awesome, and you can really see the textures of the crystals that I was talking about. So I'm going to take a couple more shots before we move on to the next item, which is going to be water. Spoiler alert. Water, probably the most amazing photographic subject because it comes in so many shapes and forms and colors and appearances. Anyway, today we'll just fill up this bowl with water because we'll be using it later in this video anyway. And as we fill it up with tap water, we'll just photograph the turbulences and rapids that the tap causes as it flows into this bowl. So we'll put it in the sink and we'll just put on the other lens because we really don't need to get in that close and would be difficult to find a composition or even to focus and you only have so much time if you get close there because you'll get splashes on your lens and as soon as there's a bunch of splashes on your lens you won't get sharp images anymore. So this is the set we'll be using. I've got um, a step ring on here as a lens hood which protects it from glare and water. We'll be using the speed light on camera um, probably at a 16th and I got my aperture at f11 which is a good and reasonable value because we don't get the fraction or anything but we get a bunch of depth of field which is what we need. And 1 16th flash power should be short enough to really freeze motion. So let's get started. Very interesting stuff and as you can see especially with water this texture on my light modifier really makes a difference. You can see it in the reflections and because of this texture you wouldn't even know that it's really reflections. It just blends in nicely with the texture of the water bubbles. So this is something that I found so useful. It makes an even diffuser light and it is just perfect if you have reflections because it makes nice reflections. Next we'll be photographing soap bubbles. Now when it comes to photographing soap bubbles there are two things to be considered. First of all, what do you want your background to be like? Nobody wants a cluttered, distracting background. So the typical choices are either black or more bubbles. I want more bubbles. This is why I went for a large container to blow my bubble solution in. If you want a clean black backdrop, just blow a single bubble in a smaller container and make sure you don't get any light spill in your background. Stop down your lens to cancel out ambient light and then just shoot away, ideally with a softbox. Now the second part, as I just mentioned, is how large is your light source? Because the larger your light source, the more psychedelic colors you will show in your images. The light that reflects off the bubble 
problems is what causes these um, psychedelic gradients and moving patterns and if you have a larger light source a larger part of the bubble will be directly illuminated and reflect these colors this is why I exchanged this little light modifier for a larger one which means that I'll be using uh, losing some more light and I have to increase my flash power but that is okay because it's going to be worth it now let's start shooting Nice, we got some really cool shots here, but before I use the soap to clean up my kitchen, we've got one more item left on our list, which is going to be a good old kitchen sponge. Now let's shoot some backlight through this bad boy and see what we can come up with. And these are some interesting textures, almost looks like the soap bubbles we just photographed before, but it's actually not soap, it's... Who knows? I don't know what sponges are made from. Definitely bubbles. Alright, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Maybe you found some inspiration in it. If you did, leave me a thumbs up, consider subscribing and I'll see you soon in another video. Cheers! Yeah.